So, welcome back. Um, next year is um, Arnold Bechtold talking about bootstrapping virtual infrastructure using Open Ebola. I'm a little bit sorry that a lot of guys visit the Ceph talk on the other side. Um, but anyways, the people are here. That's your audience. Yeah, I'm myself also uh, interested in, in self. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, um, so we, reco will be recorded we record and so give you the slides afterwards. Of course. Okay. So it's your stage. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, yeah, hello, I'm Arnold um, from Innovex. Thanks for uh, having me, for having me. Um, I would like to talk uh, um, about bootstrapping Open Nebula or how to use Open Nebula with Foreman and uh, SaltStack. Yeah, the Wi-Fi network asks me to authorize. Um, a few words about me. I'm uh, Arnold, working at Innovex. We are uh, um, busy with um, creating open source data center management um, solutions. And um, we, uh, one of our jobs is to build high available uh, web based applications and uh, services. Um, yeah. I myself also contributing to various open source projects. You will find uh, some patches from uh, me at the uh, Open Nebula project and others. And yeah, but let's go to the interested par interesting part. Um, we had a project, a small uh, reference project to test Open Nebula, um, to see what is possible with Open Nebula. And um, some goal, uh, one goal was to set up a lightweight um, hosting platform running web applications. Um, let's take an uh, average um, Java stack application with Tomcat, Apache, um, or something like PHP-based um, systems running a uh, MySQL, MySQL database backend, and others. And um, one of our goals was to um, use the uh, hardware resources more efficient. So um, virtual machines should be used instead of bare metal. Um, and the infrastructure should be easy to maintain. When I speak about, when I, um, um, yeah, about uh, infrastructure, I mean um, the uh, cloud infrastructure, the systems necessary to, uh, to maintain the cloud, but also um, the infrastructure necessary to uh, to maintain to run um, these uh, hosting platform, for example, an average DNS server, DHCP, time configuration management um, systems, um, taking the job of configuration management, and others. And as I said, um, we hope no one died. Um, Um, our job was um, we uh, yeah we are we created a new um, infrastructure from scratch so no existing uh, setups systems was uh, were available and um, instead of using predefined or um, prepared disk images which you can see on um, or re read about in the open neighbor documentation but also in the OpenStack ecosystem you often see um, virtual machine images which will be prepared, um, operating system will be install installed at the in, in a VM, um, operate, uh, software will be installed, configured, um, and people make images from them and using them to bootstrap or to deploy additional virtual machines, for example, to scale um, the, the worker nodes for a service uh, in no time. Um, about this topic, um, I will um, say some uh, words later. Um, another point was that no sort of short sto uh, yeah, shared storage was available. This is a very funny thing when you want to uh, so set up high available applications, um, services. Um, you need to take care of um, the availability and reli reliability of the virtual machines. And um, yeah, it was an interesting uh, um, challenge. Also, the hardware, there were um, um, Quite, uh, that was quite good hardware, but um, very medium-sized um, 
They only had uh, two one gigabit Ethernet network interface controllers. And uh, normally when you want very cool cloud computing, um, you might want to have something like Ceph uh, or uh, other tools. And you, yeah, they have some, um, they have their um, hardware requirements. And if their hardware, it wasn't possible. But um, the whole project here was to, to, to see, to learn why, um, uh, what is uh, Open Ebola capable of. And yeah. A few uh, words about the, the architecture. You see the uh, original cloud of the old days, the internet, having access to um, systems um, uh, in, these, uh, yeah, in this picture. Um, you see, for example, that the Wi-Fi already again uh, asks me to authorize. We simply diesel. Um, you see management hosts running um, services um, used for um, the management infrastructure, for example, um, software like Foreman, um, your DNS server, um, for example, a bind DNS server, your DHCP servers, um, your systems you're using for configuration management, for example, the SaltStack master. When you're using Puppet, you would deploy a Puppet master here, um, and other things. Also, the Open Nebula system itself, the Open Nebula controller, uh, maybe the front end uh, user interface, and so on. And you see these hosts, uh, well, there are these two management hosts, but also two additional hosts. Um, in fact, there are more than two, but um, that's just for simplicity. Um, they're all having um, using the same hardware. Um, they um, all run virtual machines and um, having a very similar stack. So for example, you have the local storage. It's there are only uh, four um, um, hard disks um, running in a RAID 10 hardware RAID. Um, for networking, Open vSwitch was used to provide um, network connectivity in within uh, VLAN, virtual networks, virtual LANs, across multiple compute nodes. Um, in because of the fact that, this the, that the switches, um, the, the whole switching infrastructure was owned by the ISP, um, and administ uh, administration of the switches wasn't possible. Um, open vSwitch was used. Um, for configuration management, um, but also the remote execution and some portions of um, orchestration, the tool SaltStack was used, or the stack. Uh, it does a, a lot more than um, SaltStack and remote execution. And uh, as you might know, Open Nebula for virtual machine management. Right, how does uh, VM deployment look like? We have these, you have these three columns here. Um, Open Nebula, used for virtual machine management. Foreman, to do provisioning or do network-based installations of the hosts. Um, these hosts can be bare metal hosts or virtual machines or other things capable of Pixie Boot and something like that. And Foreman is also used as the external node classifier for SaltStack, which is also used by Puppet. Puppet and Foreman also work very well. And in the third column, you have SaltStack, which is used to configuration management and orchestration. So how does the cycle look like? Um, at the first point, you have the VM creation. Let's say we create an, the, the virtual machine in Open Nebula via the Sunstone user interface or the command line interface or one of the application program interfaces um, or the API. And um, after that, you have um, the possibility of the, the hooks in Open Nebula to tell Open Nebula to create a host in Foreman um, this works via the REST API of Foreman 
um, it is very easy to deploy or to create new host in Foreman, um, changing the host parameters of hosts, adding subnets uh, or managing subnets and um, things like that. And the API is very cool and very well documented. Um, so you have this hook um, creating the host in Foreman. What Foreman does is adding the DHCP record. Um, let me say the, that um, uh, Open Nebula uses the um, Foreman API and tells Open Nebula uh, Foreman to the, um, the host name of the virtual machine, the domain name, the IP address, um, or the, su um, the, um, the subnet. Foreman can, can t um, choose then the IP address based on the available DHCP records or the used DHCP, DHCP leases. Um, and that's it. And what Foreman now does is to add a DHCP record um, so that the system might be, uh, um, uh, regardless if it is a uh, virtual machine or a bare metal, um, plain hardware, can boot via net the network, via Pixie boot, and downloads the TFTP files from, the from CentOS or from Debian to start the network-based um, operating system installer. Um, yeah, Foreman also does um, downloading these um, TFTP files uh, when they're missing and um, some additional magic. And when the uh, network um, installation starts, um, the network installer calls um, Foreman for the preset configuration or uh, CentOS side or Red Hat side the um, yeah the configuration of Anaconda called Kickstart. Um, this information contain all informa um, these these uh, configurations contain all data and information. Um, for example, for the partition table layout. Uh, which additional packages should be installed, which default root password should be used, and so on. Um, you might um, have worked with it. Um, this is not rocken, r uh, any rocket science. So this installation proceeds uh, in sub 4, and you might have a uh, um, finish or post-installation task, um, some lines doing some additional bash or shell magic, where you say, um, install me additional packages, or for example, install me a puppet agent or a salt minion, which is uh, the, um, uh, the, the agent software at SaltSec. And the system reboots. And now the SaltSec uh, part is, um, SaltSec is now taking part of the additional process. You have um, running, starting the virtual machine after the, after the uh, first reboot, after the installation. And SaltStack will then take care of doing um, installing software, configuring software. And um, for example, you have seen it uh, from June, um, yeah, installation of a compute node, the software, um, adding any sources and so on. And while all things you can do with configuration management. And um, then you can do some magic of uh, orchestration. So, for example, adding additional hosts after um, the system has been installed, you can add this host, if it's a uh, bare metal system, to an uh, Open Nebula cluster um, or something, or uh, adding the machine to uh, as additional uh, web backend to a software firewall or something. Um, all things that can be uh, understood by um, orchestration. Um, and the additional point is you can then let SaltStack, uh, maybe in work with, with Open Nebula itself, do um, additional scaling, for example, deploying additional virtual machines um, that would be possible out of the, uh, within the, the SaltStack process. Um, yeah, but it, it depends whether you want to do scaling with SaltStack or with Open Nebula. Um, depends always on your project and your requirements. There were some interested, uh, interesting challenges for 
example because um, the the hardware, uh, the fact that the hardware is um, very limited to, or we are limi very, very, very limited to do the administration of the switches, the, the hardware switches, um, and um, not having any physical access to the systems. So uh, one cool thing was to not having any shared storage. Um, we decided to use the Q-Code 2 um, VM images. Um, when you prepare QCO images on your controller or on your system, um, having the, the whole operating system data in this image and want to transfer the file during the virtual machine deployment to the target compute node, you will, uh, in using the SSH transfer manager, you will have um, open nebula copy the whole file because QCO file images don't need to allocate the whole um, size, for example, I'm saying I'm uh, um, creating with QEMO minus, minus EMG, um, uh, creating a new image file, a QCAR file, and say so you can grow up to 250 gigabytes, but uh, only allocate metadata and something uh, like that. Um, yeah, and when you're using uh, the SSH driver, um, the whole file will be transferred to the tra uh, um, target host, and you don't want that. Um, yeah, um, what we have done is modifying the transfer uh, manager, um, which is based on the SSH um, driver. Um, we are simply creating a new image um, on the target, ho uh, target host without copying from the controller, uh, and that's it. Um, um, right, that's it for the storage part. Um, the networking part was also very interesting. From my part, I'm uh, not, uh, my, um, my sources uh, aren't, aren't from the networking uh, yeah, uh, branch or area. Um, I set up, uh, I uh, yeah, created the open vSwitch uh, networking um, um, yeah, stack, or I, I implemented it using Open vSwitch. And since I'm not having a lot of experience with IPC, I have very low um, cloud infrastructure requirements. Um, that's uh, yeah, thanks to the Open Nebula um, concept. You only have your compute nodes, your Open Nebula controller, um, um, and that's it. Uh, you can scale at the, the user interface uh, <coughs> level, and um, I don't have experience in scaling the open network controller, but I think this should be also possible at least. Um, 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 it should be, uh, or it is possible to make it higher available uh, in an active passive setup. Thanks to the salt side part, it is possible to um, implement a very high degree of automation. So, um, like when you're using Puppet, um, you can deploy new hosts using um, this, uh, the process, the cycle I showed um, uh, here on the other slide. Um, you can deploy new hosts um, um, when you have prepared your Puppet files, uh, manifests, or your salt stack files. And everything is done fully automatically, so you don't have to do anything to install software, um, changing configuration, default configuration, and things like that. Um, you have, thanks to Open Nebula and Open Vswitch part, you have a very cloud-like feature set. Um, I'm careful saying cloud because um, the scaling, the horizontal scaling. Um, is, isn't uh, yeah, tested in the setup. There are only five up to ten uh, compute nodes. Um, things may look different when you're adding 40, uh, 50 or other additional compute nodes. There might be some limitations at the GRE uh, level. Um, yeah. um, because of the shared storage, you don't have availability of um, doing live migration of virtual machines when you're maintaining a compute node 
or something like that, or you're having a crash and want to spawn the virtual machine on a working other node, um, you have to um, choose other ways to do to make your services high available. Um, right, and the VM deployment using the part, um, the the way of provisioning and deploying by net install takes up to 10 minutes. Um, for some people having the requirement of deploying new additional systems, this can be too long. Um, yeah, um, I also wrote some um, thoughts or ideas um, at the bottom here. Um, it always depends what you are choosing for your setup, whether you are using the prepared virtual machine images to do a fast deployment of additional virtual machines in your private or your public cloud, or using individual deployment uh, and network-based installations um, not to, so you don't have to, to maintain these visual images because um, they should be always uh, um, have a uh, current um, state of the package versions and so on. Um, and yeah, um, you can also decide whether you're using DHCP or the Open Nebula contextualization. Um, you can move some logic to Foreman or SaltStack uh, regarding the IP address management when you have Foreman integrated in your CMDB or other parts uh, in your corporate infrastructure. infrastructure. And um, yeah, pets are, aren't always bad. Um, I, would, I would say that the, the virtual machines in the setup are uh, more to see as, um, as, yeah, as pet kettles because they have, some of them have a very long uh, lifetime um, because they're providing a, a, a long uh, time to uh, provide uh, to set a service, web services. Um, but Open Nebula can be used to maintain or to, to run these um, systems, these lone living machines. And um, yeah, pets aren't always bad, but uh, both of them have the advantages and disadvantages. Um, this was my last slide. Um, if you're interested, we are hiring in Germany. Uh, we are, um, yeah having a lot of excited, excellent job offers and want to thank you to listening um, although there is another talk uh, from all set which is also very interesting. Thank you. So if there's any questions feel yeah. free. Some questions? We don't need the microphone because no. it's broken. <laughs> So what's more like the size of the uh, deployment we're talking about? We're talking about 5 to 10, it's, it's, uh, it's 8 or something, um, I don't have uh, um, the right numbers. Um, talking about um, two, from 2 to 300 meter emissions running on these nodes. Okay. Okay. Do you beat any bottleneck? Um, no, I heard of uh, bottlenecks uh, in the in the monitoring part of Open Nebula. Um, I must say that monitoring of virtual machine is done by other systems like uh, Nagios, Checking Car, or other tools. Um, I don't uh, saw any um, production critical um, bottlenecks, um, but the system is, uh, as I said, uh, more a lab. Um, than um, running big production uh, yeah, load. Why do you use um, the RP of Foreman and not the RP in the other direction? The RP of um, Open Nebula with Fog, for example, um, which is not implemented in. Thanks to the Open uh, Netbase guys, there, yeah. are, there is an uh, Open Nebula plugin in Foreman. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it is, uh, it is at the moment not compatible with the, mm -hmm. with the current um, Open Nebula um, or Foreman version. But um, in, I, I tend to say that um, 
I'm using Sunstone more as the interface for the customers or for the users. Mm -hmm. Instead of Foreman, in Foreman you can add additional hosts and Foreman could manage these. There are, there are also other providers for Oviet, vSphere, EC2, OpenStack and so on. But um, Foreman is used uh, or is uh, especially um, perfect for admin guys. And I think um, the Sunstone has some uh, Next to the fact that it, it is very fancy and looking cool, um, it has a very high level, um, is a very high level user interface which could be suitable for, for your customers. And thanks to the features of OpenAbler, you can use the hooks to do additional, uh, yeah, uh, triggering additional processes like adding a host in Foreman or adding a host in your in your configuration management database or uh, triggering your accounting billing or something. Questions? How is uh, your uh, network uh, latency between uh, your host when you are running uh, the create tunnel and the uh, IPsec on top of it? Um, the networking part, the, as I said, the networking part, uh, part was very interesting and uh, funny and um, um, cost some uh, uh, a lot of cups of coffee. Um, um, I made some tests using iperf, which is just using very small packets, uh, not writing to the disk. Um, as I said, the network interface controllers had a bandwidth of one gigabit, and um, when you are um, running the iperf tests between compute nodes. Um, um, or in, uh, uh, between compute nodes and between machines on the same host or other hosts. Um, yeah, for example, you are running a IPF test uh, on the compute node to the virtual machine on the same system. You just uh, have something like 19 gigabit. It's far more as the Linux bridge itself. Um, when you are running the IPF test to another virtual machine in your network, um, to another compute node, um, you can use at least uh, the gigabit bandwidth uh, uh, of the host, so gigabit wasn't uh, uh, a big problem. Um, I can, when you're using 10 gigabit interface controllers, that might be look uh, different, but um, I couldn't find any uh, bottlenecks in the networking part because uh, there are only one gigabit interface controllers. Thanks again. Um, <laughs>